Welcome to installing Ubuntu 10.04 in VirtualBox. Please get all the things listed before starting. Thank you. Let's get started. First of all, launch VirtualBox. Then click the blue New button in the main window to create a new virtual machine. Click Next. Next, give your virtual machine a name. Um, I'll just call it Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. You'll notice that um, VirtualBox is automatically assigned um, the virtual machine's operating system and type. Click the Next button and assign as much RAM as you are comfortable to assign to a virtual machine. Don't go over half your RAM. Next up, we need to create a hard disk. Now, you may have already, you may already have a hard disk, so pick Use Existing Hard Disk. But in most cases, you want to create a new disk. Click Next and Next again. Um, you'll notice that there are two different types of storage. There's dynamically expanding and there's fixed. Dynamically expanding storage, um, when it creates the virtual hard disk file, the virtual hard disk file is only as big as the amount of data you have stored in it. So a 20 gig hard disk would not be a 20 gig file until you'd filled it with 20 gig of data. Fixed disks um, perform faster but take up 20 gig of space straight off the bat and tend to take quite a lot of time to create. In this case I'm going for dynamically expanding storage. You may want to go for the other one, but I prefer dynamically expanding. Click Next. Now, this window allows you to choose a name of your drive, the location of your drive, and how big the drive is. I'm just going to leave these at defaults for the purposes of this demonstration. Click Next. Ensure that you're happy with everything, then click the Finish button. Once again, ensure that you're completely happy with everything and click the Finish button. If you're not happy with anything, click the Back button and go over your settings. This is where most people would usually just click the Start button. Kindly don't. Click the Settings button. Once you've clicked the Settings button, a new window will open up and it will give you some basic information about your session. You can rename the virtual machine here, change the operating system and change the type of operating system. Under the Advanced tab is stuff that I don't generally mess with. Leave it alone. And under Description, you can give your system a long description of perhaps its contents or what programs you've installed on it, just to make it a bit more visible if you've got more than one um, virtual machine of the same type. Under System and Motherboard, you will probably recognise most of the settings here, we have the amount of memory you've assigned to the virtual machine. Um, having this at about a gigabyte is usually quite good if you have a gig of uh, free RAM kicking about. There's also the boot order, which you can change there without having to use the virtual machine's BIOS, like some other um, virtual machine programs. Uh, there's also some more advanced settings down at the bottom. For Linux-based systems, having the hardware clock in UTC and having an absolute pointing device is usually the best idea. Under the processor tab, we have... Um, the ability to set the number of uh, processors that you allow the virtual machine to use on your system, ah, along with PAENX, which is an extended feature which um, um, exposes a special feature of some P C uh, CPUs to the virtual machine, usually pr provides a massive boost in virtual machine performance. Um, I usually assign two CPUs, maps, two processors or two cores to the machine to um, to get a pretty decent performance out of it. Um, never assign the same number of um, processors to the virtual machine as you have in your system simply because simply because it would it will cause extreme performance degradation and under acceleration there are the hardware virtualization options. If your computer supports full hardware virtualization both of these should be enabled. I'm just going to nip back into motherboard and re-enable IOAPIC which is required if you are exposing more than one processor to the virtual machine. Under display we have the display settings like um, how much video RAM you wish to assign to the virtual machine and the number of monitors. I tend to give my virtual machines about 64 meg of video RAM which is good if you can spare it. It allows high definition video playback and, this, and the like. Um, also I tend to enable 3D acceleration which 
that's pretty self-explanatory. It enables 3D acceleration inside the virtual machine. VirtualBox being one of the few virtual machine programs that supports this. And 2D video acceleration I'm not going to bother enabling because it is not supported under Linux guests. Now the relatively important bit, under storage, if you go to the IDE controller and click on the CD that says empty, go to, that'll bring up the CD settings, you then go to CD slash DVD device and click whichever host drive you have the CD, the Ubuntu CD in. Um, if you're using an ISO image, just click the B folder icon and navigate to your ISO file and open that up instead. Audio settings, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the host audio driver should majority of the time be direct sound and the audio controller should the majority of the time be ICH-AC97. Just leave these alone. Network settings, uh, depending on what you're using the virtual machine for, should depend on what you set the attached to. Leaving it at NAT is usually the best if you just plan to use it as a desktop style system, and bridged adapter is good if you want to assign it its own IP address on your network, which is good if you set up a virtual server system. I've just left it at NAT. Under serial ports, um, you can just leave that alone. It's not anything overly important unless you have any specific serial devices that you want to set up. But, um, if nowadays you have very specific serial devices that you wish to set up on a Linux virtual machine, the chances are you're not watching my video learning how to work VirtualBox. I'll just skip over that. USB, um, both options under USB should be ticked. Take note that if you're using VirtualBox Open Source Edition rather than the Closed Source Edition, which is the immediately downloadable one, then the USB controllers are closed source, so they will not be available if you are using open source edition. And finally, shared folders, which I will not be covering in this tutorial. They simply allow you to share um, folders over a virtual network to your virtual machine. All right, click OK, and then click the Start button. Once you have clicked Start, it will open up a window. I usually maximize this. Just click inside the black window, and it will lock your mouse cursor and keyboard to this area. I'm just going to fast forward this section. This bit can usually take about a minute and a bit to get going, so please be patient. Once Ubuntu has finished starting up, you will be presented with the purple background picture of 10.04 LTS, and then you will be presented with a dialog box asking you which language you wish your operating system to be in, and also what um, whether you want to try out Ubuntu or whether you want to install it. In our case, hit the install button. If you are installing on a physical machine, you should always try Ubuntu first to ensure that it works properly with your hardware. So up comes the dialog box, wait for it to load, and then click the big install Ubuntu 10.04 LTS button. Ubuntu will perform some rather brief checks, it will set the clock, and then it will ask you what time zone you're in. In my case, I'm just going to leave it on UK, but you can use the region and time zone drop-down boxes to select where you live. Do you set that up, click the forward button. It will set your clock, and then it will ask you what keyboard you are using. Um, I'm just going to leave it on suggested, which is United Kingdom, but um, I'm assuming for most of you, you will need to select guess key map. Then when you click the guess button, it will ask you to push a series of keys on your keyboard and will make the best guess at what type of keyboard you have. It's usually very accurate, but if it gets incorrect, you can choose your own out of the list. Click the forward button. It will perform a few more system checks. And now it will ask you what you want to do with preparing disk space. In the case of this example, we are just going to erase and use the entire disk, which is also what most people will want to do. But if you're installing on a real computer, already have anything set up, or want to, or feel you are um, as much of, uh, enough of a power user to set up your own partition table, you specify partitions manually. I will probably cover this in a later video because Gparted is quite a lot to go into for a basic setup. Click the forward button and then it will ask you some information about yourself. You can set your name, the name you want to use to log in, your login password, and give the computer a name. Virtubuntu is the name that I've given the system, how original, and then what you do is you set what type of security you want. Do you want um, 
people to have to log into your computer by putting in a username and password or do you want it to log you in automatically if you live on your own or you trust everybody that's in your house then I would suggest that you just have login automatically for the sake of um, speed and convenience otherwise set require my password to log in which will prompt people for your username and password this is good for laptops and other systems that you carry about or if you're completely paranoid select the last option require my password to log in and decrypt my home folder this will encrypt any data that you put into your home folder so if you've not logged in nobody else will be able to access it at all and then click the forward button once more so I'll just get out of here um, double check that everything you want is set up correctly um, if things aren't set up correctly just click the back button and change settings um, if you're having second thoughts about installing Ubuntu, click the quit button and that will abort the setup. Otherwise, click the install button. Now, this next bit is the actual installing bit. Um, this took me about 10 minutes with the way mine is set up. Um, it might take you less time depending on how powerful your computer is or how you've got your virtual machine set up. It could also take you more time. I'm going to set up um, this video so that it rapidly fast forwards through this bit. Once the installation finishes, it will prompt you to restart your computer. Just push the Restart Now button and VirtualBox will restart the virtual machine. At this point, you will be prompted to remove the disk and then close the tray. Please do so now. Once the system has finished restarting, you will be presented with a logon screen. Click your name, type in your password, and then click Login. This will take you to, hopefully, a fully functioning Ubuntu based desktop. What we now need to do is we need to install the guest editions. The guest editions are a special suite of programs which are designed to improve the performance and functionality of the virtual machine. To do this, what we do is we go into the devices menu in VirtualBox and click install guest editions. Then in Ubuntu go into the places menu and select VBox Editions. This will open up an Attilus window with the VirtualBox Editions in it. Then click the Open Auto Run Prompt button. A new window will appear prompting you to run the software. Click the Run button. Another window will appear prompting you for your password. Enter the password you entered at Setup and then click the OK button or press Enter. Once you hit OK, a new window will open up. This window just tells you the progress of the installation take about 30 seconds, so I'm just going to fast forward this bit. Once it's done, hit the return key to close the window. You now need to restart the virtual machine. Close the file browser, click the power button in the top right, and then click restart. Click the restart button in the prompt, and the virtual box will restart itself. Once the virtual machine restarts, you may notice that the resolution is much higher than it was. Just log in as normal. What we need to do now is we need to update the virtual machine to make it safe, secure and perform a few updates. So if you go to the system menu, then go into administration and then click update manager. This will launch the update manager program which will connect to the net, check for updates and then just click the install updates button. Enter your password and then click OK. This can take a while so this is another section that I will speed through. Once the downloads are complete, the window will change into an installing software window. This will just give you information about the software that is currently being installed. You can probably go and make a cup of tea right about now. This could take longer than the download actually took. Once that is finished, you will be presented with a Restart Now dialog. Just push the Restart Now button. Once the system is restarted, log in one last time to make sure that everything is working correctly. I hope my guide has been very informative and I plan on making some more in the future. Thank you for watching.